when you're on top of a mountain in a building that spins around, you have to do some strange things to keep the lightning off of your head. Okay, Mr. Shoemaker, what are we doing and what's going on tonight? Well, what I'm doing here is, is laying out our game plan for tonight. We prepare that and during the afternoon before each uh, night's observing run because it depends on what's happened the nights before. Uh, so we take, we'll take we probably take about 50 films tonight. Those are pairs of fields, so about 25 fields. Each uh, film pair is separated by about 45 minutes. Uh, so I lay out on uh, these sheets, sets, in which uh, normally we have uh, eight films or four fields uh, and they're laid out in sequence. And I have to put those, lay those down so they're spread across the sky uh, so that as we start in the early evening we're shooting uh, film, uh, shooting fields uh, that have uh, declinations that are more westerly and then we and then we gradually move eastward across the sky. Actually, the sky, of course, is rising uh, uh, across our uh, general uh, viewing area during the course of the night. So the trick is to try to keep the films that we're taking, or the fields that we're taking, uh, as close to the zenith as possible. Very good. And uh, what do you expect to see tonight? Well, tonight we're going to go back and revisit some fields that we've already uh, photographed earlier this run on the first night as a matter of fact because on those fields uh, we have objects that we're following uh, objects uh, discovered on uh, prior observing runs in prior years and also we're following some important uh, earth approaching asteroids that have been discovered by other observers as well uh, so a fair amount of our work is related to getting the necessary follow-up observations, astrometric positions, uh, that to enable precise orbits to be calculated. Very good. Thank you. Hello. Could you please introduce yourself and tell me what you're doing there? Yes. I'm Carolyn Shoemaker with a stereo microscope that was built specially to look at our films. We put two films on that we have taken uh, any one of these nights, and I examined the pair. It's a, it's a pair with the same field, guided on the same star, and taken about 45 minutes apart. And by scanning the films in this manner, I can find my asteroids. The, par the movement uh, of the Earth against the stars uh, gives us a parallax that allows us to find the asteroids and comets, because they become the images that float up above the surface when I look through here. Then over here, on the light table, I have a field which tells me where an object was that uh, we have taken another year. And so I lay the film over this particular field, matching the stars, and look to see uh, where this object should be on my film. I mark it with a pen in this manner in order to uh, be able to find it when I put it back on the microscope. And then I put it back over here, and I look where I've marked the red dots. If I have an object that floats in between those uh, marks, then I know I've found my object. And hey. this is the way we get our follow-ups. Has it worked for you? Oh, it works beautifully. It's a marvelous system. Congratulations, very interesting. Thank you. And the finding in the Magellanic Clouds of the miracle variable stars that have subsequently turned out to be extremely significant, both for the exploration of extragalactic space and for the measurement of star distance within the Milky Way. Mm -hmm. What have you got there, Gene? This is Fritz Wicke's observing code. He's the man who really founded this telescope. And, and his code's still tucked in here in a little closet under the stairs. Does he let you guys use it? Oh, I don't know. You know, he's, we feel like he's yeah, still yeah, no, here. He was, you know? he was doing videotaping, <laughs> so I wasn't supposed to talk. So uh, we yeah. enjoy showing our vi visitors that uh, he still has his presence here in the dome. Gotcha. I'm ready, Dave.
killed by, uh, by Russell Porter, who's still a fame of fame. He founded the, he founded the uh, Cellophane Conference in 1925. And uh, they all heard about it. They heard that Porter had taken telescope making out of the woods and brought it into the basement. And he thought, this is the man that I want for the 200-inch project, to work with the 200-inch. So Porter came out here, and the first major telescope that he built was this one. It's a Schmidt camera, and uh, it's, uh, see, that so, so many of Russell Porter's beautiful designs, like his, he always had these tapered edges with all the designs. It's, it's tapered here. You see the tube itself is a little bit tapered at the edge. Um, other telescopes, like Paul Mark. And the ones that he made over at Stellafane are also like that. It's, uh, it's a lovely telescope to move. Uh, in the declaration. And uh, the accusation. You just grab onto it with two hands and you move this very big telescope around with a very easy. It's just an absolute delight to use. Uh, it uses film that's Placed directly at the, uh, at the prime focus, so we just open up these two, these two doors here, and we load the film in here. And then when it's when we, we take the cover off, close these up, and when it's time to expose a uh, picture, we open the cover like that. Of course, normally the telescope would be pointing through the aperture of the film. Uh, the dome, even though it's a small dome for an 18 inch telescope, uh, it has a really, it has a, the drama of a big dome when you're trying to move it. Very good. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. Here's the business end of the 18-inch. And there is the primary and secondary mirror. Who's in charge with keeping that thing clean, Dave? Uh, it sure needs a little bit of maintenance, doesn't it? Okay. Okay, Dave. What's the plan? Well, what we're going to do tonight if the sky remains clear, we have our doubts at the moment. But we hope to take as many as 45 to 50 exposures. Each exposure covers an area of about uh, 8 degrees of sky. And we we'll take each film twice so that anything moving from one film to the other will, uh, we can catch the two films. That's with Carolyn's equipment, films. right? Yes, that's with Carolyn's And uh, during a really good observing month, we have seven very nice, we could take more than 300 films. Our most important discovery so far has been periodic comet Shoemaker 89. It's the one that is uh, split up into 21 pieces, all of which we're going to get to for the next, well, next July. <clears throat> That's a very satisfying discovery that we made. Another important one is we found an asteroid that is in orbit around the sun, but it is it shares the orbit of Mars has. It's 60 degrees along Mars' orbit, behind Mars, it follows Mars. It's uh, the term for it is a Martian Trojan asteroid. And uh, the name we've given it was Eureka, after Archimedes' uh, expression of joy after he discovered the principle of displacement of the water. I'll bet you that was a good night for you. That was a good night, yeah. We didn't realize at the time how important other interesting objects that we've found as well, the periodic comet Shoemaker Levy 9 indicates that there are eight other periodic Shoemaker Levy comets, and uh, three others that are non periodic. So we have 12 Shoemaker Levy comets altogether. Carolyn has found others with this telescope as well. Her total is 31. So it's done very, very well. Congratulations to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. What have you got there, Dave? Okay, this is this is our plan B. Uh, this is Minerva. It's my six-inch common hunting telescope. 
We used it one night. One of our discoveries, periodic comet Shoemaker Levy 6, was bright enough that when we sent the report of the discovery, we were actually able to include a visual magnitude estimate with this telescope. 